care about, I'll start talking about what we do. So we are the Boulder County Arts Alliance, and we are a 501c3 nonprofit art service agency. We were established in 1966, thanks to the Neodata Endowment Fund, and have continued to provide leadership resources and advocacy for the arts. Now I'm curious, show of hands here, who has ever been to a Boulder County Arts Alliance workshop? Anyone care to shout out what that workshop was? Social media? AI. AI. Oh, is that the one with um, Robert Reich? Nice. Cool. All right, well, our Business of the Arts workshops are designed to empower artists with the professional skills that they need to thrive in today's current world. So these tend to cover three core competencies or three core subjects. Now, my background is in early childhood education, thanks to Front Range Community College, who I'm very excited to see is here today. Um, they are such an amazing resource for people, um, and I feel like what I learned at Front Range Community College was informative for so many other things, besides for just early childhood education. Their professors are amazing. Um, but, so, I can't help but piece things into curriculum pieces. So, our curriculum with our Business of the Arts workshops, we have business strategy. That might be things like marketing, grant writing, social media marketing, um, as well as how to prepare your taxes as an artist. We also have workshops that focus on climate justice. So we recently had a panel, Interconnected, which was um, presented by Amy Hoagland and Kathy Sergio, who had met um, aboard the an Arctic ship for a residency, and they talked about our current climate and seeing it in person, traveling around the Arctic, seeing the ice melting, and the work that they were doing with that to reflect this data. Um, we also have social um, programs that are focused on social justice as well. Um, cool. All right. I think we're good there. Cool. All right. So there you go. We go business of the Arts workshops and. Um, as well as a BCA membership. And a few perks of our BCA membership is that you get discounted rates on the Business of the Arts workshops. Um, as well as you get a flag on your, in the, our member directory, which is um, a directory where you can go to connect with other artists around the area. And we also have a BIPOC artist directory that is currently in the work to, um, in, to empower um, BIPOC artists with exposure and connection. So that is something that is in the work by the request of the BIPOC community. Uh, we also conduct science and artist partnerships, um, most frequently with CU's Department of Outreach and Engagement. Um, in the past two years, we've worked on Colorado, Coloradans in our shared environment in times of challenge and change, which was a partnership between which paired artists and scientists to take the scientists research and data, and then communicate this data on climate change through their artistic expression. And that exhibit was on display at the Capitol and is now currently on display at the CU Boulder Seek campus. As well as our Connect events, which are designed for the BIPOC community to, again, increase exposure, as well as allow them to connect with, allow everyone to connect with more artists of color. Um, and then the next one was gonna be on April 16th, so if you would like to attend um, the next Connect event, this is an event in partnership um, with BMOCA as well and a few other local organizations, and we would love to have you there. It's going to be on April 16th. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna get into some of our funding resources. Um, one of the primary resources offer for artists is our grant funding program and we offer four grants one is our kind of signature grant the BCAA endowment fund and this grant is often um, the first grant that many um, organizations receive um, I actually 
my first initial connection with Boulder County Arts Alliance was that I was attending um, and now directing a poetry organization based out of the Boulder Public Library beyond academia free school. And we offer free to the public performance and poetic art education. And we were fiscally sponsored by the BCAA Endowment Fund. And that um, was a really great thing because it allowed us to pay teachers to come in and do something that previously they were all doing on a volunteer basis. So um, I've experienced kind of on both ends of the spectrum here um, how the BCAA Endowment Fund has really empowered artists in the community. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, our Martha Gay Thomas Fund is a hardship grant for artists. Martha Gay Thomas understood the struggles of professional artists and how they often are under-resourced as well as working a full-time job in addition to doing their art. The artists are exhausted and oftentimes under-resourced, and she wanted to ensure that artists wouldn't have to choose between paying their rent or buying the art supplies they needed to keep creating. So this grant is open to um, anyone experiencing hardship, as well as those who have historically experienced hardship. And then we have our, that one is a, a running grant, so that one is open year-round. The BCA Endowment Grant is going to be opening up in the spring. Uh, our Pathways to Jazz Grant is for jazz musicians and is designed to um, empower them to create a album or a CD. And jazz, I'm learning, is a very open concept, so however you define jazz, I think, might work. And if you have any questions, <laughs> we have the email for them. That is our donor advice for a few of these are donor advised funds, which means um, we process the grants, but they make the decisions. So they're the ones we'll send you to um, if you have any questions um, regarding whether or not your application will qualify. Um, and then the expectation with that is that you do create a CD. Um, and then that one is also a running application. Um, and actually, no, that one is not a running application. That one is going to um, open up in the spring as well. And then our Arts for All Children is probably our cutest grant because it's the one where we will fund music teachers to bring music education to under-resourced children. Um, one of our um, grant-funded projects right now is the Boulder Muse, um, and that one is our running grant for musicians. Uh, and fiscal sponsorship. So fiscal sponsorship means that if you are not a nonprofit organization or artist, however you would like to apply for nonprofit funded grants, you can do so with the um, support of a fiscal sponsor. So we have fiscal sponsors who do that. You can also solicit tax deductible donations as well through the fiscal sponsorship program. So it's a really great stepping stone program if you um, would like to accelerate your organizational or artistic mission. All right, and now our community resources, which are really designed to connect the community. Well, most of our programming for is really to help be a web weaver um, of artists because we all will benefit when we're all connected. One way we do so is through our arts calendar. It's a community arts calendar, and it's one of the largest arts calendars um, in Boulder County. And it was, um, I was just looking at the data for it the other day, and I think um, in the past uh, 10 years, it's represented over 100,000 events on it. And um, every day we're receiving incoming uh, calendar events. You can submit to it for free, and then your event will go out to um, a mailing list of over 5,000 people. Every week, we send this out. So um, it's just a calendar with this week's events. So we encourage people to use it. It's a great exposure. Uh, and then our Opportunities Bulletin. So that's slightly, that's slightly different from our, our arts calendar because the Opportunities Bulletin, it's kind of like Craigslist for artists where you can like post job opportunities or if you're seeking an artist for something or if you are seeking in an artistic job, um, or if there are other grant funds that are out there in the community, 
Um, there's a variety of opportunities on the bulletin as well. Uh, our member directory, we talked about that a bit. Um, our public art map, super great if you want to go on a little adventure. Um, and then keep an eye out, we're hoping to do a public art map, sort of scavenger hunt for Boulder Arts Week. Um, and our art spaces, another place where you can list your art space if you have a studio that's for rent. That's a place where you can advertise it. Um, and our arts advocacy opportunities. Um, most recently, 2A was a big push that was happening, so we were on board with that. And yeah, um, you can also sign up for arts advocacy alerts. Um, but I think the most um, important thing that we would like to communicate today is that please send us your stuff. We want to make sure that you have as much exposure as possible. So you can go on there, you submit your event, we prove it, easy peasy, and then it's on this calendar with all of these other cool events. Or if you're looking for something to do, it's a great place to go too. Um, some really interesting things coming up. Um, And then, all right, so here is what our Community Opportunities Bulletin page looks like um, and our web website. Um, so if you want to see the arts calendar, you're going to go on to the blue um, tab at the top, and you're going to go Arts Calendar. And now here's the thing that is maybe a little bit confusing, um, is that it says today's events and this weekend's events when you click the drop-down menu. If you click either one of those, you can also see all of the events. So if you're looking for everything happening this month, click either of them. Um, and then, as you can see, it has by category, by discipline, by city. So if you're a Longmont event, um, or you're off, you have a Longmont opportunity, you can put it in, click Longmont, and that becomes searchable. There's a lot of different filters on there. So you can really customize your search, as well as make your submission really customizable and how people can search for it. Um, we also have our resources, which um, you would find on the green um, on the green tabs there, and um, the art resources is kind of similar to the opportunities bulletin, but a bit different. It's like a running list of um, different website resources that we have, different um, other grant funds um, that maybe are not local opportunities, um, and the art resources. Again, if you click it, it's going to say COVID-19 next to it, but you can just click Art Resources and it's going to bring you on. It also has a running list of local arts calendars, so more discipline, organization specific. Um, thanks. Um, and so this is just a sample of what um, the Boulder County Arts Calendar looks like. Um, so yeah, it looks like just in this weekend we're going to be having 24 events at least. Um, and yeah, this was um it was a community project and you know i i'm still learning the history of what's gone into bcaa it's been an organization since 1966 so there's a lot of history to learn but um what i do know is that the community arts calendar was um designed to meet a need um, when it was created in the community and now creating arts calendars um is so easy we're doing it all the time and our hope is really to make sure that we can be that common thread with everyone so that um, if you need to go and learn about the arts that are happening in the community, you can come to us and we will have a direct link and portal there. So also if you have a calendar for your organization, send it our way and we'll link it up there. All right, and here is our dinosaur QR code. <laughs> Let's stay in touch. Um, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, um, and we like to chat. Um, really, we are there in the office. You can call us. We'll talk to you. Um, if you have any questions about our programming, you can also sign up for the BCAA newsletter. So um, I did mention that our weekly calendar um, goes out every week. And so that's just representative of the community events that have been submitted to us. And it um, will communicate what's happening that week. But we do have a monthly newsletter as well that um, talks a little bit more about our specific programming and our business of the arts workshops that we have going on. Um, we actually are in the midst of a series right now, which is Transform Your Passion into a Profession. And it is being led by Kathy Beekman at the Collective in Lafayette. Um, our first one just happened this week, the first part in the series. 
you are welcome to um, drop in um, or register in advance for um, either of the upcoming two workshops that we have. The most recent one was um, how to become, become confident in your creative expression. And our next one will be making the transition to full-time artist. And our third one will be um, how to grow a creative business that feeds your soul. So we're getting a little bit of the inter, um, the, uh, our own um, personal reflection. Um, in the, that first one, we delve, um, really dove deep into um, the mindset skills that make a resilient artist in the face of setbacks that artists often will experience. Um, and the next one will be definitely more business oriented as well as the third one I think is gonna be kind of a merging of the two. Um, all right, so anyway, you can find us at bouldercountyarts.org and you can email us at info at bouldercountyarts.org. Um, thank you to our sponsors, the City of Lafayette, Arts and Cultural Resources, SCFD, Boulder Arts Commission, Office for Outreach and Engagement, CCI, and Community Foundation, Boulder County. And thank you, um, Long Long Creates, for having us here today. And thank you, creatives, for being here today. I feel like the world is in it's like this transitionary period right now, where the artists are having kind of like their own little renaissance. And we're saying, we're here. And we're going to make art. And I think people are, are pushing back on the status quo of, you know, maybe I want to start shifting away from my 9 to 5 that I really yeah. don't like. And I want to. Be an artist, is that possible? It is. All right, thank you very much. Colorado. We're located within the 
Office of Economic Development. Um, so our physical office is in Denver, but we work all over the state. And been around since 1967. We used to be called the Colorado Council on the Arts. And um, we have a series of grants, programs, and resources that help support artists, um, arts and culture organizations, and all creative businesses. Uh, and our mission is to support, promote, and expand the creative industries to drive Colorado's economy, grow jobs, and enhance our quality of life. Um, this is, we do a lot, so this is, and I'm gonna try and be quick and just hit the high points, but hopefully this can give you a quick overview of all the different things we do. Um, so we work in the community and economic development space, and some of the programs we run um, in that area are the Creative District Certification Program, or here in a state-certified creative district, Longmont, has been certified for almost 10 years, actually. And we have a program called Call Yourself Creative that helps communities form creative districts on their own, um, and they can eventually become certified if they'd like to. We also have a couple of programs that help with uh, affordable housing for the creative sector in rural areas and capital improvements that have a benefit for the creative sector. We do a bunch of uh, things to promote arts education in the state. Um, we have grants and awards and then we do a lot of professional development for the field. And we run the statutory percent for public art program too, so any state building. Um, that has that's new construction or renovation, 1% of the budget goes into public art, and we manage those projects. And a lot of them you, you maybe haven't seen, they're in a lot of like colleges and universities. And one of our big projects um, that's more visible is the Federal Judicial Center down in Denver, the Ralph Carr Judicial Center, and History Colorado. Um, so, a little bit about some of our major grants. Colorado Creates. I'm sure some of you here, if you are with an organization, are familiar with this program. It's been around for a long time, and it's just general operating support for um, arts nonprofits. And it is uh, based on your annual operating budget. It's a flat amount. It's a two-year funding cycle, and it's opening soon in March. It'll be open for a couple of months. Um, you have to have been doing public programming for two years to be eligible and just have to be an arts nonprofit, but that's the major eligibility. And we have a really cool program, it's one of my favorites called Arts in Society, and this program is administered by Redline. Um, it has multiple funders and it funds projects that are at the intersection of arts and society, so our arts and social issues. So we fund projects that use the arts to impact um, health outcomes or uh, are integrated into transportation. There's so many, this is so broad and there's so much you can apply for. It really encourages collaboration between um, artists and non-arts entities. And these are pretty large grants, up to $35,000. Um, it's pretty competitive, and we fund about 20 to 25 projects annually. Uh, that will, we expect that to open in July. <clears throat> and this is, this is our newest program. We started receiving some federal funding for folk and traditional arts. Um, we used to have a pretty robust program here in Colorado, and then, and then there was not really funding available. So we're rebuilding that program and we have this small grant that's open right now through February 29th. That's leap, leap day. <laughs> um, the grants are up to $3,000 and they can support two different funding opportunities. This can be used for like creation, presentation, or teaching of folk and traditional arts projects, like festivals that um, promote folk and traditional arts and or funding and documentation of folk and traditional arts or cultural heritage. So we've had some really exciting applicants so far and like a ton of interest in this program. Um, we just got asked to translate the application into like, some Ethiopian language that I haven't heard of, so that was really exciting that we're reaching uh, different communities in Colorado. This is also a new grant program we're running called Equity and Arts Learning, and this is in partnership with Think360 Arts, and it's focused on increasing arts education access 
um, for historically marginalized youth. It's open to nonprofits and schools in Colorado and um, funds any kind of project that brings arts education to kids in and out, out of school. And these are $10,000 to $25,000. We just closed this grant, um, but we expect to offer it again next year, and it should open around September. We have, uh, as many of you have been to our annual conference, we do an annual conference in a different creative district every year. Um, we have a, uh, one person, okay, <laughs> thanks for coming. Um, but this year it's May 9th and 10th in, in the Pueblo Creative Corridor. And if you haven't been to Pueblo in a while, it's pretty awesome, so you should come see it. Uh, we have professional development and networking for artists, creative businesses, and also arts administrators. Um, we do a lot of fun performances and you really get a chance to see the community and the creative district and experience it. Uh, registration isn't open yet for this, but it will be opening sometime in the next month or so. And you can see more info and, and agenda info on our website. Um, I just wanted to mention quickly a couple of other things we do. The Creative District Program, we have a pause on new certification right now because we're looking for additional funding. Uh, but we do have 30 state certified creative districts all over the state. And then um, another thing that we've been working on lately is the uh, affordable housing for the creative sector and capital improvements. Um, we also are awaiting additional funding for these programs, so we don't have active funding available, but we hope to offer some in 2025. These are just some key upcoming dates that we have going on. So we've got an info session. Uh, I guess this is in two weeks, right? January 29th. <laughs> no, next week. <laughs> next week. Um, February 29th is the deadline for the Folk and Traditional Arts Grant. And then in March, our Colorado Creates Grant will open. May, we have our summit. If you want to learn more about what we do, you can join our newsletter. We send that out once a month. And contact me for more information. There's, t there's a couple things I forgot to put in here. Um, one is we do a lot of professional development and technical support for artists and creative businesses. Um, we do that in a few different ways. One is through our partnership with the SBDC, who you'll be hearing from soon. And then we partner with the Colorado Business Committee for the Arts to put on a series called Advancing Creatives that provides professional development to artists. And there's one happening here in Northern Colorado um, soon. So hopefully some of you applied to be a part of that. If not, we'll be continuing that series. It's a six-week professional development series, and then you have the opportunity to apply for many grants to help implement some um, improvements to your business. And I want to say, too, that Colorado Business Committee for the Arts is a really important statewide partner of ours in the arts advocacy space, so they um, do advocacy for the arts and creative industry sector, and they have a Colorado Arts Action Network that you can join on their website where you'll get notified of any kind of issues that are happening that you can help advocate for. And we have a few funding requests in the governor's budget proposal this year, which is very exciting. Um, so we get additional funding in our budget, additional funding for the Creative District Program, and then more funding to do the affordable housing and capital improvements in the state. Um, so we encourage you to join the Arts Action Network and help uh, get those funds that we can get back out to all of you through our programs and services. And that's all I have. for Longmont with Boulder SPDC. Um, so we work uh, within the economic development landscape um, in a few different ways. Um, I don't have any slides, and I sat over there so that you wouldn't, um, you know, so I wouldn't block your slides before. I learned so much, you see me taking pictures. I was like, oh my god, that's like really cool. I had no idea. Um, 
So the Small Business Development Center, um, the network started in the 80s. Um, I think Colorado in 1987. Um, there are 15 small business development centers in the state of Colorado. There are a thousand in the country. So we work closely with the OEDIT office. Um, I'm just learning about all of the stuff that you do. I want to work more with you. Um, we work with the city of Longmont. City of Longmont actually gives money. Hey, hey. Um, city of Longmont gives uh, money to do specific programs for Longmont so that you don't have to go into Boulder. Um, we work with you know Kimberly at um, downtown Longmont. We work with the chamber. We uh, really um, try to help stay in touch with you know what's happening so that we can help small businesses to start grow and scale. So um, these are the three things that the Boulder SBDC and other SBDC networks do. One, um, we provide consulting. So I think that the programs that these ladies were talking about sound amazing for creatives, like totally cool stuff. Um, we have about mm, 30 to 40 consultants that are certified. Uh, we all sign confidentiality agreements. We're all specialized. I would say that 95% of the consultants with the Boulder SBDC have their own business, and whatever we're consulting on is usually reflective of you know that skill set. So we're not generalized. If you went to an SBDC in a different area, it might be a generalist. Here, it's we really try to pair you up with um, somebody that you know has that background in finance, in HR, in um, marketing, sales, uh, all of those things. So. Uh, I, for some of you who have been to the SBDC, you know that I always say I'm kind of like your fairy godmother. So 95% uh, of the people that, or even maybe 98% of Longmont residents will come to me first, and I'll do an initial meeting with you to find out what you need help with, and then I'll connect you to resources, whether that's a consultant, or um, it could be uh, like um, somebody, you know, like Kimberly, if you want a space downtown, or maybe um, you want to buy a commercial property, and you know, it might be, let's talk to the um, economic development, you know, group to see like what connections can be made. So, consulting is step one, uh, again, at no cost to you. Uh, the second thing is uh, connections to resources, which I was just kind of talking about. Um, and the third, the third thing is um, workshops. So in September, for example, there's a business planning class. It's called Leading Edge. It usually is at the Longmont Chamber. They've been remodeling for some of you that are chamber members. Um, but it's usually held there. So um, 15 businesses are accepted uh, with a scholarship for the, um, from the city of Longmont. So I think it might be like $125. They've been waiving fees for all the classes and things since the pandemic, so I'm like, I don't know what things cost anymore. But uh, it's a really great program. It's an eight-week business plan course, and you know, it's a cohort, so you get to work with you know other people. Not all are creatives, um, but you know, it gives a little bit of flavor. I actually used to teach that program. Um, it's the first thing that I did with the SPDC when I started my business 20 years ago, and then began um, consulting with them and. Uh, giving my time as a you know, program developer and things like that. So um, there are also marketing classes. There's one coming up um, that I will be running. It's um, panels of marketers that talk about, um, you know, they're from around the country, so they're going to talk a little bit about what's happening today. So we might be talking about AI. We might be talking about um, TikTok now that it's hot. Like it changes each time and it's just different panels. I take 20 businesses. Um, there is a rubric. Uh, if you want to apply for that, the applications are open. Um, all you need to do is go to boldersbdc.com and uh, go into programming. And I don't know if this is set up for internet or I would show you, but you can always find me because I'm going to be on a panel at one. <laughs> so ask me if you're interested in it. Um, because, like I said, it's, it's pretty popular. There's over 100 and some companies that apply each time, and I have to whittle it down. And I usually take at least a couple of artists, because I love you. Uh, so that's really what the SBDC does, um, kind of in a nutshell. I know that if you have questions, I'll back it off, and we'll, we'll open that up to keep it short. So there you go.